You ready? Okay. Um, we're going to talk today about hypothesis testing. So let me give you, let me ask you a question. If you look up the definition of a hypothesis in Webster's Dictionary, what do you, what do you think you're going to hear? Or what are you going to read about? It's good. It's an educated guess. Okay, I can't hear. It's an educated guess. Now, in statistics, the statistics definition of a hypothesis is still an educated guess. But it's an educated guess about a population parameter. OK? And if you guys remember the population parameters um, from last week, what were they? You had four. P, what is this? Percentage or proportion or probability. Uh, mu, what's that? The mean. Sigma squared, what's that? Variance. And then sigma, what? OK, so this here, there's four okay, parameters in statistics. So a hypothesis in statistics is an educated guess about a population parameter. OK, you guys OK with that? OK, for example, the proportion of students who are female okay, is greater than 0 0.5. This is a hypothesis in statistics. Okay? It's an educated guess. Now, people are of the belief that there are more female students than male students in colleges and universities. So, this information that you may see or you look around and you notice, hey, there's more females than males, well, that's, you can make, you can form a hypothesis, an educated guess, that the, pro, that the proportion of students who are female is greater than 0.5. So this is a hypothesis. Okay, you guys okay with that? Um, another example. The mean study hours And this is on a per week basis. The mean study hours per week is equal to mm, 14. Okay, this is another educated guess about a population parameter. What's the parameter in this hypothesis? You guys know what's the parameter in this one? The mean, how do you know? It says the mean. OK? Example. The proportion of students who smoke is less than 0.35. OK, another hypothesis. What parameter are we talking about now? How do you know? It says it. Yeah. Example. OK. Um, the mean cups of coffee per day that students drink
is at least 2.2. Okay? This is another hypothesis, and what parameter are you talking about now? The mean. <coughs> Bless you. Okay? All right, so we've got one, two, three, four. Let's do another one. Example. The proportion of what? Proportion of students who drive to campus is not 0 0.6. Okay, so this hypothesis is, a, is, a, is this is a statement, an educated guess about what parameter? Proportion. proportion, how do you know? Because it says it. So this is a proportion, is that true? This was a what? Okay. This is a? This is a? This is a? Proportion, okay? And so what we're going to do now is we're going to describe symbolically these hypotheses. And how you do that is simply look for certain key words like if you're describing the proportion of, females, uh, proportion of students who are female, you see this key phrase? How do, you, how do you represent is greater than? What's the greater than symbol? Isn't it that symbol? OK. So the hardest part for students at times is you have the phrase and you have the symbol. So you can have the phrase greater than and the symbol is a greater than symbol. Okay? What about the next one? Mu is what? Is equal. So mu is equal to what? 14. So the phrase equals is same as yada yada all those all those phrases the symbol is what is equal. What about this one? Proportion uh, less than what what does that look like? And then less than what? 0.35. So here, less than looks like this. What about mu um, what? What about at least? What's at least? No. How do you, what's the symbol for the, for the at least phrase? Greater or equal to. And then what value? 2.2. So at least. is represented by the greater than or equal to symbol. Okay. How about something like this? No more than. Right? What's the no more, no more than symbol? Okay. No more than we can think of it this way. What's the what's the more than symbol? You say well there's no more than symbol. There's a what? Greater than so no more, no more than is actually like thinking of not what? Greater than. So this is a not greater than. What is that equivalent to describing? Less than or equal. Okay. So what happens is when students read the, these hypotheses, the hardest part at times is actually translating the statement symbolically. The first part is to identify what parameter they're talking about. They're talking about a what? Proportion. And it is what? Not. How do you write not equal? Let's cross it out. What comes next? That point six. OK? So is not equal, we'll add to the list. It's not equal. 
Okay, so these are some of the key phrases. These are how do you, this is how you translate these hypotheses symbolically. Does anybody have any questions on what we just did? It's going to tell you the parameter for the most part, and then you're going to have to read off what symbol you're going to use. Okay, these are educated guess, guesses about population parameters. Okay, you guys okay with that? All right, now we've got a few more definitions for you. Definition of what's, no, of what's called a null hypothesis. A null hypothesis is a hypothesis that involves equality. Okay? Another definition is an alternate hypothesis, and that is a hypothesis that does not involve equality. Okay? So you have two types of hypotheses, a null hypothesis and an alternate hypothesis. And the symbol for a null hypothesis is the capital letter H with a, with a zero subscript. That's the symbol for a null hypothesis. The symbol for the alternate is a capital H with a one subscript. So let's take a look at this phrase. It says, a null hypothesis is a hypothesis that involves equality. So what symbols you think here involve equality? Does anybody know what kind of symbols involve equality? The equal, <laughs> right? What else? Good, less than or equal, greater than or equal, and that's it. Not equal does what? does not involve equality. Uh, what else? Strictly less than, there's no equality involved here, and what? Strictly greater than, there's no equality involved here. Okay? So these symbols involve equality, these symbols do not in involve equality. And so in your hypothesis, if you notice what symbols are used, that defines whether it's a what? Null or a alternate. So let's take a look. Let's look at all these examples. The first one looks like we didn't do, but p here is greater than 0.5, right? Is that a null or is that an alternate? How do you know? It lacks what? Equality. The next example, is that a null or is that an alternate? That's a null. How do you know? Involves what? Equality. A null or an alternate? How do you know? It's strictly less than. The next one, a null or an alternate? And how do you know? Involves equality. Now, what about this one? A null or an alternate? How do you know? It does not involve what? Equality. Okay? So, these are our hypotheses, and these are what we've noticed is there's only two types of hypotheses a null and an alternate. And it's dependent on whether it involves these particular symbols. OK, you guys OK with this? OK, let's see. Here's the deal. We're going to talk about hypothesis testing. Now, hypothesis testing has a certain procedure. And this procedure is completely analog 